Good morning, and happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Welcome to SSUC Online. This is a time we take together to reflect on our lives, and how we want to be in the gift of time, in the gift of this day, in the gift of this breath. Although we can't share a place, we can share space. We're in this time together. Whoever we are and however we are and wherever we are, whatever it is we're hoping for, whatever it is we're grateful for, whatever it is we're celebrating, whatever it is we're carrying this day, whatever it is we fear and whatever we dare to dream, we are together in this time with one another to ground in wisdom, to deepen connection, to strengthen our capacity to live in ways that are more faithful to truth, to justice, to humility, to respect, integrity, dignity, love, and acceptance. As we gather on this Thanksgiving Day, joining me in the room in welcoming you and in greeting you this day from the booth, Brett and Andrea helping us with all things technical, at the piano, Chris, and from uh, earlier work this week, Chris and Noah offering us the gift of music and the accompaniment of our music this morning and also in helping our singing, leading our singing this morning, Janice and Pam. We are grateful to be here to share this time with you wherever you are, wherever you make your way in this day. I want to show you just a, an opportunity to connect with us this morning on your screen we're inviting you to share with us a little bit about your Thanksgiving gratitude, how your sense of gratitude may have changed since last Thanksgiving, and what is inspiring your gratitude today. We would love to hear from you, either uh, emailing Chris at the email you see below or texting at the number you see on the screen. And please add your name so we we know uh, who's communicating with us. We'd love to hear from you. And you have a few minutes to do that, and we'll share those responses with each other during the, the time for all ages. We want to also not only acknowledge this space in time, but also this place in time, honoring the land that feeds us that opens to give us the gifts of life. And so wherever you are this day, we invite you to take a moment to think about those who first made their home on that patch of land. For those of us in Edmonton and Saskatoon, we find ourselves on the land of Cree and Métis peoples and the traveling route for many indigenous peoples, adopted homeland to so many of us migrants from all around the world. Today, in this Thanksgiving season, we honor this generous land that has opened to nourish us and give us all a place to flourish. We take our place here with one another as mindful partners of Treaty 6, Treaty 6 territory, a land and a people of so many different names, seeking to be united in a future that is healing and healthy for all. I invite you to take a moment to identify the land and its first peoples, wherever you are in the chat on Facebook or um, on, the, on the website where you're watching this morning. We take this moment to express our gratitude as we sing with one another with the help of Pam and Janice. We sing our gratitude. Thank you. 
If you have a candle with you, I invite you to light your candle with us as we light ours in this space. We come to remember that we are born of fire. And we light this candle with the intention to ignite our capacity for our passion for justice, our passion for life. And we remember we're born of water, born of water in bodies made mostly of water on a planet we call home that is mostly water. We light this candle remembering that we are air a single breath separates us from not being. A single breath, air, gives us life again for another moment. And on this day we remember we are soil, that which opens to feed us, from which we come and to which we return and spend our lives building soil for one another. We light this candle remembering we are part of all that is. And like trees with earth in our roots and sky in our reach, we are born into light. And we are ever seeking it, day after day. Our time for all ages today. Oh, let me crouch down so I fit in the camera. Uh, our time for all ages today is feedback from you, and uh, thank you for those of you who have uh, responded with some of the some of the uh, the thanksgivings that you have. Uh, great. Now I will grow. Uh, some of the thanksgivings that you have uh, today and this year, but also uh, how how perhaps this Thanksgiving has changed uh, for you. Uh, thanks to Virginia, who writes, I'm uh, very grateful to be Canadian today. And Sherry Ann, who's emailed and says, connection in its many forms and media with every dimension of life with Earth amid the pandemic inspires my gratitude today. Tanis writes and says, I'm thankful for the good health and welfare of all my family, and though I can't be with them this year, I know they are well. From Shirley Murray in Saskatoon, this is a wonderful time of year. I will enjoy what family I'm able to see this weekend, although I'm unable to go to the lake this year, as is traditional. It uh, reflects uh, many of us in sharing kind of those things that we're grateful for, despite uh, it being different or, or having challenges or things that we're not doing as usual. And Tricia, also from Saskatoon, writes, I have a keener appreciation for being able to hold family members and friends and for the safe haven that is my home since last year. I'm grateful for this lovely fall weather and being able to enjoy it thoroughly. Thanks, Tricia. Bonnie writes, My sense of gratitude has been heightened for the beauty of nature, for people, and for the community that supports us. I think many could echo that sentiment. Well, Jim and Margaret have written that they're grateful for Nancy, for Chris, and many others who have kept inspiring the SSUC community in spite of the pandemic. Thank you, Jim and Margaret. And Marg uh, emails, changes this Thanksgiving. I'm not taking anything for granted anymore. I'm appreciating ordinary life, ordinaries in quotes, as treasured life now. 
What's inspiring me? Nature, having a neighborhood, relationships, memories, SSUC, and Tuesday Connection friends. Thank you, Marg. I just want to uh, mention just a few others because there's, there's quite a few and they're all so wonderful. Reiner and Amy have written, we're thankful for our computers that make virtual visits and meetings possible during this time. Reiner and Amy, so true, just yesterday we were sharing how uh, computers can be such a frustration but without them, uh, think of what limited connection we'd have during this time. You're so right, Amy and Reiner. Don and Annabelle have written, my sense of gratitude has been heightened for the beauty of nature, for people and for the community that support us. And because those of you who have texted are, uh, can't be left out, I want to uh, read a few of the texts that have come in as well. Nell and Curtis have written, we find ourselves more aware of and grateful for small things. Flowers, birds, colored leaves, and daily walks along familiar paths. Andrea has texted from across the room just over there, and she is even more grateful for the time I get to spend with friends or family in any way, shape, or form. It's beautiful. Arvin and Bernie have texted, gratitude for family and friends, for the grounding of SSUC in this unusual time, and especially Serenity, their granddaughter, in our low moments. That's not true. What am I talking about? Serenity in our low moments. Oh, it's a double meaning there. Very smart. Um, Mary McFarland texts, I have more gratitude for living in Canada. We have a health care system that serves everyone, no matter one's circumstances. Linda May texts, the beautiful autumn weather for golfing and walking. And just a couple more. Angela texts, I'm grateful for SSUC finding ways for us all to connect during this time. Pam and Janet from home text this, small inconspicuous things easily unrecognized or dismissed in past times. Smiling eyes atop masks, kind words shared by friends and strangers in shared experience, the knowledge of loving and being loved, taking nothing for granted by intention. It's a beautiful text. Thank you, Pam and Janet. And Allison has texted, my mom was a public health nurse as our new baby gets their shots, and as I witness the efficient beauty that is COVID testing sites, I'm grateful to have a new way of connecting with her, and so grateful that that good work goes on, quietly on. Thank you, Allison. And thanks to all of you for sharing this Thanksgiving weekend and the ways perhaps our gratitude has changed and many of the ways it's stayed consistent for all of us. Thank you for sharing. We are not alone, we are not alone, we are not alone, God and us. We are not alone, we are not alone, we are not alone, God and us.
A reading this morning from Marg Piercy's poem. The discipline of blessings is to taste each moment. The bitter, the sour, the sweet and the salty. And to be glad for what does not hurt. The art is in compressing attention to each little and big blossom of the tree of life to let the tongue sing each fruit, its savor, its aroma, and use. Attention is love, what we must give children, mothers, fathers, pets, our friends, the news, the woes of others. What we want to change, we curse, and then we pick up a tool. Bless whatever you can with eyes and hands and tongue. If you can't bless it, get ready to make it new. In the words of this poet, may we find wisdom for our living. This is an ancient story that comes to us from Luke's gospel, the gospel that most often gives us the unique stories that none of the others do, that involve outsiders, unexpected heroes. This is one of those stories. Comes from Luke chapter 17. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten who were suffering from leprosy approached him. Observing social distance, they called out to him, Teacher, show mercy on us. 
And when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they became clean, whole, healed from their leprosy. And when one of them saw that he was healed, he turned back. He was offering praise in a loud voice. When he got back to Jesus, he fell at his feet and thanked him. This leper was a Samaritan. And Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? What of the nine? Where are they? In this ancient story, may we find wisdom for our living. There are so many platitudes about gratitude. It's as though gratitude is some kind of a quick-release capsule. We dissolve under our tongue, and in no time, we feel better. And maybe, just maybe, we get this idea of identifying gratitude as etiquette, our culture's expectations of good manners. Do you remember, as a child, being pressed into saying thank you as your get-out-of-jail-free card that released you from the company of adults and set you free to go and play with the gift that someone just brought you. Somehow I think we have over-identified the practice of gratitude with well-mannered expressions of saying thank you. It's easy to do. Even a highly regarded spiritual teacher from the first century slid into the same trap. Would the story have been any different if five out of the ten had returned? Or say even nine out of the ten? Even if nine out of the ten had come back to say thank you, would we still be focused on the missing and seemingly expected expressions of thanks from the others. Thanksgiving sermons in our tradition love to beat up on those nine. They missed their lines and exited stage left without a word. So we parade them out every Thanksgiving as these thankless little so-and-sos who didn't have a grateful bone in their bodies. Last Sunday, a friend shared a story during one of our breakout rooms during Expressing Wonder, the conference that we shared together last weekend. His story has traveled with me all week. My friend was remembering an incident he experienced a number of years ago on a cold morning when he was driving to work and he saw a young Aboriginal man walking on the highway. The young man was not warmly dressed. He was wearing only a shirt. He had no jacket. Not the kind of winter footwear that the weather called for. And he was still some distance from the town when my friend pulled over to ask him what he was doing out on the highway and where he was going. And the young man indicated to my friend that he had a court appearance that day in Fort Saskatchewan. So my friend picked him up, gave him his jacket, took him to the RCMP detachment in Fort Saskatchewan and requested that they help him get to, his, get to the courthouse for his court appearance that day. Rather than commending this young man, for his efforts to make it to court. 
the officer on duty to whom my friend spoke. The officer at the detachment began to berate the young man for failing to adequately express his thanks to the stranger who had helped him, shaming him and blaming him for not expressing his gratitude. I recognize the story of the nine lepers in that story. And I recognize my dominant culture and its expectations in my friend's story. I recognized how this officer assumed that silence was a lack of gratitude. I recognized our assumption that a police station is a safe place for everyone. I recognized how difficult it is for us to put ourselves in the skin of someone whose experience is so different than ours. And this story took me back to my own memories of so many mornings just like that one when I would have been in the role either of the Crown Prosecutor or the Duty Counsel, waiting for my legal aid client to arrive with no understanding of what it took for him or her to get there, let alone what it meant to be there. And I would have listened to judges scolding an accused or scolding a witness for their failure to make eye contact without knowing that in their culture it was an expression of respect. And I would have remained silent or been silenced as someone was interrogated or shamed for being late without any understanding of how they had managed to get there at all. We see ourselves in these stories. We're so focused on the nine. So focused on our expectations of what gratitude looks like and smells like and sounds like that sometimes we miss its medicine altogether. The nine who didn't make a U-turn and say thank you never got a word of credit for their compliance, for just doing what they had been told to do. Why don't we celebrate them for following the instructions they were given to go and show themselves to the priest? Weren't they just obeying the Levitical law which gave their priests the authority to determine whether the lepers were clean or unclean, whether they had to remain segregated or whether they were free to go home to their families, to go back to their lives, to their communities? And what do we know? about their experience of living with a stigmatizing, ostracizing, isolating disease. What could Jesus of Nazareth have known about the reality of being a leper? Yes, he's often a model of compassion. Yes, he's often an advocate for those on the margins. But here, like us. He was a product of his culture, of its expectations, of the limitations of our social location. Our experience and our expectations are shaped by the gender we wear, by the hue of our skin, by our sexuality, by our socioeconomics, our traditions, the power we have or don't have the teachings that have shaped us. What if by turning back they lost their chance that this could be it? 
This could be freedom. Who's going to jinx that and turn back to say thank you? Of course they were thankful. Weren't they just like prisoners walking past iron bars? Who in their right mind doesn't just keep walking toward that new day of freedom? Weren't they just like hostages that had been liberated? Who could believe that the moment had come when they were actually free to return to their communities, to go home to their families? And maybe they hurried away to pay it forward. Maybe they hurried away to make up for lost time. Maybe they hurried away to the joy of returning to celebrate with their families, to the delight of returning to the embrace of their communities. Maybe some of them couldn't trust the change in their circumstances yet. Maybe it was too good to be true. Maybe there was a catch. Maybe they were speechless, grateful beyond words. We don't know what it is to be any one of the nine. We don't know what it is to be a young Aboriginal man walking beside a highway on a cold morning. We don't know what it is to be in another's sandals or runners. But we do know that criticism is easier than conversation. And we do know that judgment is easier than listening. And we do know that drawing conclusions is easier than opening to new understandings. And there was one in the world of that story who, for whatever reason, chose to disregard the instructions he was given chose to give that priest a miss. Maybe he was just doing what came most naturally to him. Maybe he wasn't doing anything particularly exceptional. Maybe he was just navigating this moment as he navigated his life. Maybe he received his newfound health the same way he lived with his disease. with easily expressed gratitude for a new day, for this new measure of health he had. Maybe he was always grateful for having won the greatest lottery of all, having been born. His expression of thanks comes so naturally, so instinctively, that maybe it was a well-exercised habit in his life, and somehow, he could afford the luxury of taking time to stop and speak his mind. The story takes pains to tell us he was a Samaritan. He was a leper and a Samaritan, a margin within a marginalized community. He was a visible minority who stands out even more because he's the one who does what is expected, not of him, but of the others. Yet he, the unexpected one, becomes the teacher in this story. The one who knew the poet's truth, the truth of Marge Piercy that Dawn read for us a few moments ago. He was one who tasted each moment, the bitter, the sour, the sweet, and the salty, and was glad for what did not hurt. Perhaps he knew that pausing to express his gratitude was what he needed to do to complete his healing, not making his way to some priest, some other authority, or even to his family if he had one but that he needed first to give voice to his experience. 
expressing his gratitude with words was his medicine. It was his way of, in the words of the poet, compressing attention to each little and big blossom of the tree of life, to let the tongue sing its, and savor its aroma and its use. For others, the medicine of gratitude was consumed in the taste of living their freedom, turning their thanksgiving into thanksgiving. Gratitude is one of our medicines for these troubled and troubling times. Gratitude isn't about good manners. It isn't about expected etiquette. It isn't about just saying thank you. It isn't about some kind of accounting program where we count our blessings as though we were adding up the pluses and minuses in our lives. Gratitude, it's drinking the tonic of attention, how and where we place our focus. And the prescription may be different for each of us, but the medicinal value of living from a place of gratitude, from a place of blessing, anointing one another with words that respect and affirm, anointing life with our haste to celebrate what we can and to seek to change what we cannot bless. So we take these few moments as we're joined in the company of instrumental music as Chris and Noah play for us to think about in these moments how we might share the tonic of gratitude even this day. An antitoxin in this toxic time of cruelty and fear and selfishness. Gratitude, it's a habit to foster, a practice to attend to, a medicine for our time.
take this time to strengthen our intentions to live in ways that live from a place of gratitude. The prayer we share this day is inspired by the words of Reinhold Niebuhr, words that have been shared in many 12-step programs in various ways. There are a number of variations on his words, and today we offer those as our serenity prayer on this Thanksgiving weekend. May we find the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference, patience for the things that take time, gratitude for all that we have, and empathy for those with different struggles, the freedom to live beyond the limitations of our past ways, the ability to feel loved and to feel love for each other, and the strength to persevere. May it be so. We want to take just a few moments to share a few invitations with you. One that follows quickly on the heels of our time together in this live stream. Please join us on Zoom for coffee and conversation. Make yourself a cup of coffee and uh, dial in on Zoom. You will find the link you need in the morning messenger. Or if you need to, to receive it again, you can contact us at any of the ways you see on your screen at the moment. Join us for coffee and chat at 11.15. You can stay just a few moments or you can stay the full half hour with us. It's just time to see one another, greet one another, and connect around um, the theme of this morning's gathering. Also on coming soon, beginning a week from this Wednesday, we have a new fall and winter children's program that we're launching. Ariane and Daisy have some wonderful uh, stories, some uh, at-home family activities, some songs. Please check your midweek uh, email on Wednesdays beginning on October 21st. It's an opportunity to explore some of the material um, in our Compassion series, Be Loved, Be Kind, Be You. Also, this coming Tuesday, continuing our Fall Tuesday Topics series, this week, um, practice awareness of purpose. How are you feeling about your purpose these days, these pandemic days? We'll uh, be learning from the work of Parker Palmer, how to be more fully present in the world with our own truth. Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock, you'll find the link in your morning messenger, or uh, failing that, please don't hesitate to be in touch with us on the links you'll see later on the screen uh, for us to send them to you again. We also want to express our gratitude for the faithful way that you have continued to support the work of SSUC with your financial contributions. Thanks to your strong and faithful giving and to our ability to access some government um, funds uh, for pandemic uh, purposes, we've been able to replace some of the income we would have had from fundraising and from space use. And we are still in a strong financial position and would love to see that continue through the end of the year. So you see on your screen the various ways that you can help us and um, we so appreciate uh, whatever it is that you are able to do to continue your financial support of the work of SSUC. We take these words that Christopher New has given us as our way into this day to give our attention to those things that will inspire our gratitude, to 
go and make our way into the sacredness of the world we love so much. We take our candles now and turn the flame into smoke, dispersing the energy of our gratitude into this day. We go to practice the medicine of attention that grounds our gratitude in this world, in all of its sacredness. Although separate, we go together in our intention, strengthened by this time that we've shared with one another. May this be a week that you are healthy, that you are present to its moments of joy and beauty, and may we be with one another in this time again very soon. Be well.